In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Frost Paladin build, which is a New Game Plus build that focuses on the use of very specific incantations, as well as setting the Frostbite status effect. So first up, let's take a look at the weapon I'm using for this build. It's the Zamor Curved Sword. This is a weapon we showcased in the Curved Greatswords video really recently. I kind of fell in love with this weapon while testing it, and I want to talk a little bit about that here. So there are a few really interesting things about this weapon. First is the fact that it has Frostbite buildup on it natively, which is great. Not a lot of weapons in this game have Frostbite buildup, so that's cool. It has a unique R1 moveset where you kind of spin in between each attack, which I really like. It's not really part of the build necessarily, but I do like that fluid moveset. But more specifically, this weapon scales with strength and dexterity. It's kind of a quality weapon, but its weapon skill, Zamora Ice Storm, does actually magic damage. So the weapon itself does 100% physical damage, but its weapon skill does 100% magic damage. There are very, very few weapons in this game that have that sort of polarizing dichotomy where they deal a complete different damage type than what the weapon does itself. Uh, something very interesting is Margot's Curse Sword actually does this as well. The weapon itself does pure physical damage, but its weapon skill does physical and fire. But it still does some physical. In this case, the Zamor Ice Storm does 100% magic, so that's kind of strange. And this is kind of a double-edged sword for this weapon, pardon the pun, because the magic damage that Zamora Ice Storm does doesn't scale with any attribute, meaning strength and dexterity don't increase the damage of Zamora Ice Storm. So the only way to increase the damage of this weapon skill is through items and through upgrading the weapon itself. What this means is that if you found a way to get this weapon very early in the game, which would be very difficult to do naturally because it's you have to defeat a boss at one of the end game dungeons essentially in Giant Conquering Hero's Grave, but if someone dropped you one and you just met the base requirements for it or and then upgraded it to like plus seven, plus eight early on in the game, which isn't really hard to do, you would be dealing crazy damage even at minimum requirements. Like at 16 strength and 18 dexterity, if you use this weapon, at plus 7, plus 8 upgrade, you would absolutely throttle bosses. But on the flip side of that, because this weapon skill doesn't have any scaling, the further you progress into New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus or Journey 2 and Journey 3, the less effective this weapon skill is going to be, because there's no way to increase it beyond the items that we use already in this build, so the damage is going to stay the same as you go into these New Game Pluses, and bosses and enemies are going to get more and more help. So you're going to have a harder time as you go further and further. But because you get this weapon at the end of the first playthrough effectively, you can use it in New Game Plus just fine, and I've been playing a New Game Plus just fine with it. But I don't think I'd recommend going too much past Journey 3, uh, if not going all the way through a Journey 3 playthrough. So moving along to the other equipment I use for this build, in my left hand I have the Kite Shield and the Claw Mark Seal. The reason I have the Kite Shield here is I wanted a shield that sort of matched the armor I'm using for this build. I'm using the Fingerprint Armor kind of gave me this like silverish, dark silverish knight looking thing. But the kite shield is not the best shield for this. You would probably be better off with a, like a light great shield as it has more hardness, allowing enemies to rebuff off your shield more easily, making block counters a bit easier. Or you could even use, you know, a different sort of heater shield or like the, you know, brass shield or something that's a little bit more effective in terms of guard boost. But I was going for fashion, so that's what I used here. You can use any one of those you want. There are probably better shields for this build. And the Claw Mark Seal is simply because I have a good amount of strength and some faith with this build. I wouldn't consider this a hybrid build necessarily. I don't think you're going to go for incantation damage, so you can really use whatever seal you want here. But if you did want to add incantations into this build that are offensive to deal damage, besides the sort of defensive ones we have, you would definitely want to use this seal because you're going to get more damage out of it than you would a pure faith seal. And as I mentioned for the armor, I'm wearing the fingerprint armor. This has 51 poise on it natively, which is great. It's also found very near the end of the game. I like the style of it for a paladin type build. Kind of has like a bluish paladin look to it, which is kind of what I'm going for with Frost Paladin. So that's why I selected it. You can use any armor you want as long as it has 51 poise. There isn't like any specific one that I think is better than the other. Although there are individual pieces that might give you strength or faith, which might help meet some of the requirements for some of the spells and things we're using a bit easier. When it comes to talismans, I have the Magic Scorpion Charm, Shard of Alexander. I have the Curved Sword Talisman and I have the Assassin Cerulean Dagger. Now, Magic Scorpion Charm might seem like an odd choice here because it not only increases the damage you take, but it boosts magic damage, and our weapon deals exclusively physical damage. But Zamora Ice Storm does 100% magic damage, as I mentioned, and it hits like a truck. So you get three or 400 damage out of this Talisman at max upgrade on this, which is significant in my opinion. And when you combine that with Shrine of Alexander to give you even more damage, and when you combine that with the Flask of Wondrous Physique, to get more magic damage with the Magic Shroud and Cracker, you really get a lot of damage out of some more Ice Storm. 
And you're going to use Zamora Ice Storm a lot with this build too. It only costs 15 FP, which is not a lot in my opinion for the damage that you get from it. And we do have quite a bit of mind on this build, so you have a good size FP pool allowing you to use this liberally. But we also have the Assassin Cerulean Dagger here, which is going to give you 15 FP back whenever you do a critical strike. And since we have a shield, and we're going to be doing block counters sometimes with this build, you will often get critical strikes that will then refund the exact cost of Zamora Ice Storm. And lastly, I have the Curved Sword Talisman, which I mentioned, and this is just to increase block counter damage, so we get even more damage when we do block counters. So the spells that I use for this build, there's really only a couple important ones, and you can add other ones. I've got Golden Vow here, which I don't buff with often. I usually just do this before tough enemies or boss fights. You don't need to buff regularly on the landscape. Uh, Zamora Ice Storm will more than likely kill just about anything you need to in regular R1 attacks if you're, you know, an, an average player are going to help finish off enemies as well. So that's one you definitely want for this build. But the other one is Fire's Deadly Sin. This is not one I've included in a build, and I like to use this during boss fights because essentially what it's going to do is it's going to remove the Frostbite status effect that the Zamora Ice Storm applies when you're up on a boss, allowing you to reapply it again. And each time Frostbite triggers on a boss or enemy, it takes off 10% of their max HP. So this allows you to trigger, you know, Frostbite like three or four times in some cases. Like if you take a look at the Margit fight, I think I trigger it three times in that fight. And that's really, really helpful for boosting your damage with this build. You don't necessarily have to use it in the build because the more Ice Storm is deadly on its own and enemies take increased damage when they're debuffed with Frostbite. So it's not necessary, but you can use it and it works exceptionally well. Other than that, I have Blessing's Boon here to give me heal over time. This is nice if you're using Fire's Deadly Sin to offset the damage you're going to take from that. And just gives you another buff, you know, to heal you over time if you're like going into a tough fight or something like that. And we also have heal here to give you a spot heal in case you need it may or may not depending on you know how good a player you are but there are a lot of other buffs you can use with this build i have my faith capped out at 25 in order to meet the requirements for golden vow and i didn't want to go any higher but you could take it a little bit higher if you want to meet certain requirements for certain spells etc but really this isn't like a faith build necessarily we just have some faith in order to round out our buffs and heals to kind of make us more of a paladin since there's really no reason not to in this build and fires deadly sin and golden vow both really benefit this build so when it comes to attributes, I have 50 Vigor, 30 Mind, 25 Endurance, 45 Strength, 45 Dexterity, 16 Intelligence, 25 Faith, and 9 Arcane. Again, you don't need any Intelligence or Arcane for this build. Because of my starting class, that's what the attributes for those are. You've probably heard this by now. And there really isn't any case for Arcane in this build unless you want to meet some Incantation requirements. And there isn't a case for Intelligence, except if maybe you're playing like Journey 3 or something like that, you might want to take this to 20. That way you could use something like Terra Magica, drop that on the ground, that would further boost your Zamora Ice Storm damage. That might be another way to increase your Zamora Ice Storm damage, because again, there's very few ways. You don't really need to do it, it's a bit overkill in Journey 1 and Journey 2, but in Journey 3 you might need that to kind of keep your edge. For Vigor, 50 is enough here at the beginning of New Game Plus, but probably by the end of New Game Plus you want to get this up to 60 just to have more health. You do take hits and trade hits with this when you're using Zamora Ice Storm a lot, so it's good to have more health. When it comes to mine, we probably have a little much here, but you do use a lot of spells and buffs with this build, and you use the more Ice Storm constantly, so I thought 30 mine was a good place. You could drop this down to 25 or 20 if you don't mind potting more frequently, dump those points into like Strength or Dexterity, or maybe put some in Arcane if you want to meet the requirements for some other incantations, or maybe put them into Faith if you want to get a little more damage from your Clawmark Seal if you want to add offensive incantations into this build. Really, you, mind is kind of in a good spot, but it is a little bit flexible here. I wouldn't go too much higher than this, honestly. I don't think you need any more FP. Endurance is at 25 in order for us to use this equipment in medium roll. We're not right at the threshold here. You could go a bit heavier and still medium roll. So if you're using a heavier shield, you might need a couple more points in endurance, but it's not going to be too much more because we're not riding the line perfectly. Strength and Dexterity are both at 45 for this build. This is the break point for the Clawmark Seal, which is why I stopped at 45 strength. Dexterity actually outperforms strength by a little bit here. Like if you went like 50 dexterity to 40 strength, you'd get like two or three more points of damage out of your melee attack. But because I wanted to add those to the claw mark seal in case you want to use offensive abilities, that's kind of why we did it that way. But moving forward, you'll take dexterity up to 50 and strength down up to 50. And then you'll probably take dexterity up to 80 and strength up to 80 in order to you know maximize your R1 and R2 attacks, jump attacks with this weapon. Again, there isn't any other way to increase your Zamora Ice Storm damage through attributes. So these are really just for your melee attacks. And that's one of the reasons they're probably a little bit lower than you'd see in most builds at this point. Because it's not super important. And again, Faith is at 25 mostly to meet the requirements for Golden Vow. and also allows us to use all the other spells we have in this build. 
This is a bit flexible. Obviously, you don't want to go lower than 25, so you can still use Golden Vow. But if you want to use other incantations, this might go up a little bit. So when it comes to the Flask of Wonders Physique, I have the Green Burst, Crystal Tier, and Magic Shroud and Crack Tier here. Stamina Recovery is always good. Um, there aren't any other attributes, again, that increase some more Ice Storm damage, so like putting Strength or Dexterity in here wouldn't do that. It'll give you more melee damage, but I typically don't use a lot of melee attacks in boss fights, although those are options for you if you want. I do like Stamina Recovery, and the Magic Shroud and Crack Tier obviously increases some more Ice Storm damage, which is why we have it. And lastly, if you're talking about what great rune to use for this build, Godric's is perfect for this build. You need Vigor, you need Mind, you need Endurance, you need Strength, you need Dexterity, you need Faith, and if you're in Journey 2 or Journey 3, you might even need some Intelligence in order to use Terra Magica. So that's 6 or 7 of the attributes, or maybe even Arcane in order to meet the requirements for some spells. That way you don't have to put any points into Arcane. So it might be one of the few builds out there that can actually make use of the entire great rune for every attribute. So that wraps up our Frost Paladin build. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is one of my favorite builds to make, honestly. I really, really enjoyed this. Doing the Curved Greatsword video really prompted this idea, and I really love doing those weapon videos. They really give me, inspire me to do new builds and have new ideas. I would love to hear from you guys, though. Like, what weapons do you guys want to see? What builds do you guys want to see? Let me know in the comments below.